Hello, my name is Brian Johnson, and I'm a science editor with World Book Encyclopedia. I'm here to talk about a dinosaur named Microraptor. Microraptor was a remarkable creature. This dinosaur was closely related to ancient birds. It was a strong climber that spent much of its time in the trees. It had feathers on all four limbs that looked much like the flight feathers of modern birds. However, Microraptor could not fly partly because it could not flap its limbs the way a bird flaps its wings. However, scientists think it could probably glide between trees by holding out its feathered limbs. They continue to debate how Microraptor may have positioned its limbs in the air, as it was unlike any animal alive today. Scientists will continue to study Microraptor for many years, but it is worth taking a look at how Microraptor was discovered. It was identified and named in 2000, but only after scientists unraveled an unfortunate deception. Fossils of Microraptor come from Liaoning Province, an area in northeastern China that has produced a stunning wealth of feathered dinosaurs and other fossils. Liaoning is special because of the conditions found there during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous periods. At this time, Liaoning was an area of rolling hills covered by forests. There were many shallow lakes and streams. There were also volcanoes that occasionally erupted, releasing toxic gases and ash. The stunning fossils of Liaoning were formed when animals fell into shallow water and were covered in ash. This process prevented decay, so that in some cases, even soft tissues such as feathers were preserved. Unfortunately, discoveries in Liaoning had already set off a fossil gold rush by the time Microraptor was discovered. Amateur fossil hunters have made important discoveries and helped to advance science. But many farmers in the area are quite poor, and some collect fossils hoping to sell them to smugglers. An important discovery could bring a substantial reward, enough to lift the farmer out of poverty. Although it is illegal to export fossils from China, smugglers sneak many fossils out of the country to sell them to private collectors. These crimes do tremendous damage to science. For one, scientists never get a chance to study many fossils before they disappear into private collections. The fossils may be damaged during collection. Also, scientists cannot study the layers of rock from which the fossil was taken. Studying these layers helps scientists to determine the age of the fossil. In the case of Microraptor, scientists had to contend with a real mess. The trouble began when a Chinese farmer discovered what later proved to be an ancient bird. The bird, which was new to science, was eventually named Yanornis. But the farmer had only the front half of the bird. It was thought that the fossil would be more valuable if it included a tail and hind legs. So the back of another fossil was combined with the first. The tail came from Microraptor, which was also new to science. The two fossils were similar in most respects. At first glance, the combined fossil appeared to preserve one animal that had come from a single broken slab. The fossil was smuggled out of China and was eventually purchased by a private museum for $80,000. The owners of the museum believe they had an important discovery, a fossil of the most primitive bird ever discovered. They soon brought in paleontologists to examine it, and they began to discuss publishing the discovery with National Geographic. The fossil came to be known as Archaeoraptor. The paleontologists who examined the fossil quickly realized that at least two different fossils had been merged. Still, the different parts of the fossil seemed important in their own right. The fossil needed careful study by scientists. However, National Geographic did not wait for the scientists to do their work. The magazine published a story on Archaeoraptor in 1999, claiming that it was an important fossil in the transition from dinosaurs to birds. Within months, scientists had proven definitively that the fossil was made up of different animals. These animals would soon be identified as Microraptor and Yanornis. There was no Archaeoraptor, and National Geographic soon retracted its earlier story. The incident was embarrassing for National Geographic, but in some respects it was a triumph for science. Paleontologists quickly recognized the deception and properly identified the actual animals in the fossil. However, some people have used the incident to cast doubt on the larger story of how feathered dinosaurs gave rise to birds. In particular, 
Some people who do not believe in evolution have argued that all feathered dinosaur fossils are fakes. That's not an honest argument. It ignores the hundreds of other fossils scientists have recovered from Liaoning, some of which are single slabs. The evidence that feathered dinosaurs gave rise to birds has become overwhelming. There are simply too many fossils, many of them exquisitely preserved, for any honest observer to determine that all of them are fakes. One of the lessons of the Archaeoraptor incident is that scientists, museums, and governments must do more to crack down on the smuggling of fossils. China has passed stricter laws and arrested smugglers. Scientists and museums have increased efforts to work with farmers. However, fossil smuggling remains a serious problem, not only in Liaoning, but in other important sites around the world. Since 2000, scientists have found several other fossils of Microraptor. These fossils have enabled them to describe its feathers, including their color. Scientists have even recovered evidence about the small mammals and birds Microraptor ate. Many other impo important fossil finds have come from Liaoning since the discovery of Microraptor. These fossils are a treasure for all of humanity, and they must be protected.